Drove all the way from Annapolis from Down Road. Yes, sir. Yeah. Down Road, y'all know what it is. <laughs> I think I accidentally ate crack once in Annapolis. <laughs> Whatever I go to your page, it's like you're in this country, that country, that country. That's the goal. Are you a passport, bro? <laughs> <laughs> America, y'all got the shit fucked up because hoes here don't actually think they're hoes or don't think they're prostitutes. Yo! You, <laughs> Cause would you fight Jake Paul today? For no. two mil. I'm going getting that bitch with Tank for two mil. But you will fight Tank for two mil. Yes, that's two million. Marriages will never last because there's no more gender roles. Do you want to get married? No. How do you feel about turning 30? I've always told people when you turn 30, you old as fuck. But now it's like, I'm turning 30, so I'm like, I don't say it no more. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you do not own nothing, you will always live check to check. Me personally, I, I just see like failure is not an option. That's my mentality. Yeah. There's no way I can lose because everybody depends on me. What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y, and today I have a treat for y'all, ladies and gentlemen, because we are joined by artist and businessman Corey Flawless McGee. Yes, sir. What's good, bro? How are you? Good in yourself. I'm Thank doing you. good, man. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Thanks for making this happen. Uh, drove all the way from Annapolis, from Down Road. Yes, sir. Yeah, Down yeah. Road, y'all know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for those who don't know, you should know, Annapolis in Maryland is the capital of Maryland. But not only that, we're going to get into more uh, details about it. Before we do that, welcome to Charlotte. I, I like, uh, it's hot. Hot as shit it's out hot here. as hell. Shh, bro, it is hot as shit out here, especially this year. So how is it like compared back home? It's hot as hell home right now, too. Yeah. Like, before I went to Florida last week, it was like 100 every day. Ooh. And you got that humidity. Yeah. So it was like 100 every day. I said, hell no, I'm going. But Damn. I went on Florida and it it wasn't as hot as home. I don't feel like it. So Because mm. probably because uh, you got that breeze constantly from yeah, the ocean, Yeah, and about a water type yeah, thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Louisiana a couple weeks ago, New Orleans. Me too. I went out there a couple weeks ago too. Bro, that was no joke. Yeah, it was. We stepped off the plane 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, bro, ain't no way. <laughs> It's like, it's like 98 at 10 in the morning. Yeah, I, see, I just went down there and just... See, I don't go outside a lot, bro. I be, I be relaxed. Only why I, I go outside when I'm out the country. Like, mm. in the States, I don't even really care for that anymore. Why is that? It's, my experiences have been way better out the country. Yeah. 100% yeah. better. Yeah. So I'll, I'll deal with that heat. I'm not right. dealing with right. that shit. Right, right. Just for the no. same old. <laughs> yeah, hell okay, yeah. Okay, bet. We're going to get into that. Um, So like I said, down road Annapolis. Let's talk about that a little bit because you rep it heavy. Yeah, hell yeah. And, like to the fullest. Like I've never seen someone that really, really reps their city, their town, their hood as much as you do. So let's talk about that a little bit first and foremost. Let me ask you, for those outside looking in, Annapolis, Maryland, what makes it unique? What, what What's it like? What makes it unique is um, you can have the millionaires right here, mm -hmm. but shit, the hood is right two minute walk. Mm -hmm. So anywhere you see the rich people, you're going to see the poor people too. Right. And it's, I don't know. It's, it's it's like it's no it's no middle class in Annapolis mm. at all. It's either you rich or you broke. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. It ain't no middle class. Wow. You either live in the hood or you uh -huh. live in one of these rich ass places. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I, um, I used to do Amazon delivery back home. So first off, let's let me do this. Let me shout out to the person that even set this up, who's also from Annapolis, yeah. Ebony. Shout out to Ebony. Shout out to Ebony. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's the one that threw the oop for this to happen. We were talking a little bit before, uh, how we both know her. So. Ebony, she went to Annapolis High School. You went to Annapolis yep. too, right? Graduated, yep. I went to Mead High, graduated from Mead. I actually went to Annapolis prom with Ebony. You did? Yeah. So it, I, so I would have seen you. Yeah. Because I went to because I went to Annapolis prom. Well, I went to Annapolis prom twice. I went to Mead. I went to Indian Creek. I went to, oh, you went to Mead South prom? River. Yeah. I went so to, we both was probably at the same prom. Yes. Two of the same proms whole time. Probably, yeah. Well, yeah. But I, I didn't go to I went to Mead, I think the year after mine. The year after that, I think I went to me the next year. You graduated 13? Yeah, I graduated 13. Okay, okay so you went 14. Yeah, I think I went 14. I think oh. it was 14. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so me and her went 13 to Mead and Annapolis. So we was both at Annapolis. Yeah, we both was at Annapolis for sure. We yeah. was at the aquarium. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's that, that's money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. You know, that was dope. Yeah, Mead's, ours was nice too. We had it at uh, the Raven Stadium and the ballroom. That's fire. So you could like see the field. When and I went to Mead, it wasn't at the Raven Stadium. Nah, yeah. It was a ballroom, but it wasn't no Raven They ran Stadium. out of the budget after 2013. Yeah, after that, the yeah. budget went down. So we, we got the best of it. <laughs> did y'all have a class reunion? Recently they did. They had a 10 year. 
Bro, we didn't have shit. Someone got to put it together. They keep trying to ask me to put Why the hell I'm going to put it together? It, I don't want to put it yeah, together. Yeah, see, it, and that's what it takes. It takes some person, uh, you know what I mean? Usually someone that knows a lot of people, that's probably why they asked you to put it together. And I think it was, I think it's Leah. I think uh, Leah is the one that put the 2013 one together. But um, nah, I, I didn't make it, but we had it. I'm waiting on that 20 year. 20 years? Yeah. We're going to be old as fuck. It is what it is. We're going to be old as fuck. <laughs> and that's what makes it so exciting. You're going to see, all right, what y'all do afterwards? Like, what y'all really do? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, so, yeah, like I said, a uh, little bit familiar with it um, as far as Annapolis. Uh, shit, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Mostly for the worst reasons. Like, Oh, yeah. I will go out there for, like, court mm -hmm. and, um, and other stuff that we'll get into. Uh, can I tell you a quick story right quick? Yeah. Hell yeah. I think I accidentally ate crack once in Annapolis. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck you end up? Bro, I'm dealing with this chick at the time, right? And she's a party girl, right? So she was staying at one of her... <laughs> she was staying at one of her homegirl's crib, I think who lived in Annapolis or near Annapolis. And she was like, uh, do you want to try Molly with me? Got you. Oh, yeah, yeah, Molly. Yeah. It, look, it looked like it, though. It, right. it looked like it. Right. I've never done Molly at the time. I'm like, fuck it. Why not? So she's like, okay. So uh, I, got a, I got a Molly plug in Annapolis. She's kind of naive. Yeah. I know what's in Annapolis. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't everything. think she really like, she because this was her first time really going. I forgot what hood we was in. Um, but we pulled up to it. I'm like, girl, where the fuck you got us? You know what I mean? I ain't from out here. I yeah. don't know too many people from out here. So we get out there and, um, you know what I'm saying, we buy it or whatever. We get back to the girl crib and I'm looking at it and I'm like, bro, this is mad, like, solid and, like, rocky. Like, like, are you sure this is Molly? She's like, yeah. yeah da, da, da. So we ate it. <laughs> like, and and it's, a, it's, it's a hard substance and I ate it and I'm like, it ain't do shit to me. My stomach felt a weird a little bit after that and that was it. No, if it was, if it was crack... I, I believe your mouth would have went numb, though. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, your mouth would get numb. Okay, yeah, my mouth wasn't numb. Yeah, so it wasn't good. It probably was Molly. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, if it was... Just, or they just gave you some gank, which is fake shit. Yeah, I was going yeah, to say, if it was, that shit was stuck A bunch of nothing going. just yeah, took, just took yeah, your money, yeah. basically. Yeah, so that was that was crazy. Um, all right, so more on to the lighter things of Annapolis. <laughs> you give back a lot mm -hmm. to your community yes, in Annapolis. Just talk about the different ways that you do that and why, in general, you do it. Yeah, so... Actually, my fifth annual event is August 24th. Mm -hmm. So usually with my gift bag, I usually do school uniforms. So I partner with my team. We raise money or most of the time kick out our own money. And we raise like we give away about 250 plus school uniforms to all the kids, families in need. That's what's up. And more so because I got kids. Mm -hmm. I know my kids. They're going to have whatever they need. But How many kids you got? I got four. Okay. So, but... It's people, it's, I just see a lot of people that don't take care of their kids. Mm. And I, they don't deserve that because they, you know, they wasn't, they didn't ask to be here. And it's just yeah. some people that just really, Annapolis high as fuck. Mm. I'm going to let you know that. Like a, a studio, mm -hmm. probably 2000. Are you That's, serious? Stu a, a studio 2000 if you're not in the hood. Yeah, yeah. If you ain't in the hood, you 2000 or shit, like right like my man's, he had one bearer. We paying damn near 26, 27, 28, like That's shit like that. Insane. Do you know so, what that can get you out here in North Carolina? Let me know. I might, I might, I might be Jesus. moving down here. I might, I might be part of the Charlotte crew. There's a lot of people from right away in Charlotte. Like I came out here to get away and then uh -huh. I'm seeing them coming. Like, nah, I wanted to get away from y'all. Yeah, get no, the fuck I, out. One of my friends, uh, I don't know if you know, she went to um, what school did Kyrie go to? You know Kyrie? Stancil? Maybe. She went to Arundel, I think. Maybe if I seen her, yeah, it so doesn't sound she, fully she, familiar. She lived down here too, so mm, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's, Matter of fact, it might be a couple other people that really do live down here. Yeah, it's a lot, bro. It's <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. Um, so, do you still live in Annapolis? Yeah, I still live in Annapolis. Okay. So let me ask you this: So you give back a lot to Annapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, you rep it heavy. You still live there. Let me ask you: Why did you never leave? I need to leave. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I'll, be, I'll probably be rich already if I yeah. leave. But I, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I like where I'm from. That's why I, when I open, I open my business there. Like, mm. like the hood I'm from is mm -hmm. five minute walk from my business. Mm. So I wanted to put something in a city that, you know, to stop like the crime and give some, give them places to go because you. 
the closest studio, they got to find a ride to Baltimore, Pasadena, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Which you would think, I put one there, it would work, but mm-hmm. they still a travel up there because, you know, Annapolis is like a crab in a barrel city. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's no, it's not much support. Yeah. But, I make you know, make the best out of it. But if I didn't open my business, mm-hmm. I probably would move yeah. soon. But that's good, though. You're saying you put something there positive for people to gravitate towards. Yeah. And not something, you know what I'm saying, negative that'll get people in trouble. They, they whatever still gravitate towards the negative because yeah. I don't. I don't allow smoking in my studio. Mm. A lot of people don't like that. Yeah. But, so that has but, has that pushed out hell clients? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of clients that won't come there because I don't allow smoking. But you got to understand, like, today on Saturday, I have a summer camp going there mm-hmm. with kids. We right. got a photo camp in there. Right. Right now, then we're going to do an engine. I can't have it smell like weed and parents yeah. is coming to their kids is coming to this. Bigger picture than that. So, yeah. And the actual business facility that we're talking about is a recording and photography studio. Yeah. Um, and... And then the front of it is my clothing line. So, okay. Oh, so it's all in one. Yeah, it's a three in one. Everything mm. is in there. So the front is the clothing store. Yeah. In the back, you got the recording studio, then the photography studio. That's dope. And what's the name of it? Uh, GVO Sound Studios. GVO Sound Studios in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, okay, so let me ask you. You don't allow smoking in it. And it's a it's a dope concept of a facility, three in one. You can mm-hmm. take your photos there. You can record music there. And you have your own clothing brand uh, yeah. set up shop inside the middle. And you don't allow smoking. No. All of that is just a, a good, positive image for that to happen. So let me ask you, what, where did this come from, the mentality of I have to do better, I have to do more positive, I have to separate from the crab in the barrel, as you say? Uh, part of it because the order, how I grew up. I mean, I'm from the hood. I didn't did a lot of shit we wasn't supposed to do back mm-hmm. then. But also I see as we got older, mm-hmm. of course, we hung with a million people. I see where they at now. It's a lot of people that I won't even speak to these days. And it's obvious. It's not because I don't like you. We just don't, we don't, we, obviously our lifestyles are not the same. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for me to be around you. If it's, if it's, there's no benefit, I can't benefit you. You won't, I won't, we won't benefit from each other. And what are we going to talk about that we can both yeah. meet yeah, in the what, middle what, on? What, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. Cause I'm saying, Bro, I can help you with this. You mm-hmm. like to do this. Like, okay, you like to work on cars. Okay, mm-hmm. let's try to get you into this. Mm-hmm. But you so focus on that. Mm-hmm. So you really can't. And and that's what, as far as I can tell, you're someone that's like myself. We want to give back. We want to help. We want to uh-huh. bring everyone along. But what I'm really starting to realize lately is you cannot help, help everybody. And you want to know something? People hate me for this. A mm-hmm. lot of people. I don't give a fuck about adults. I only care mm-hmm. about kids. I can change a kid. I can mold a kid. I can mm-hmm. train a kid. Adults' mind is made up. Yeah. What you want to do is what you want to do. Fuck you. I don't yeah. care. So. Yeah, yeah. And you can't help nobody that don't want to be helped or don't want to gravitate them or uh, elevate themselves. At all. Like, you can tell when someone's stuck there and you're like, okay, well, you got it. You got it set. You got like, it figured out. Cool. Kids, you said you'll more so help them. Uh, all the way. Like, it could be the adults. most troubled kid. I'd rather... They still young. You have time to, you know, revert that. Like, mm-hmm. like try to fix whatever they got mm-hmm. going on, whatever problems. Maybe they at home and they really ain't got no food or something. Mm-hmm. I can get them, give them food, take them out. I got kids, so I know what to do with kids. We can go anywhere. Show them that it's more than just sitting in the hood. Yeah, it's more to it's more ways to make money than just in the hood. Right. Like, uh, fuck. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't make more money at work than people that sit outside all day mm-hmm. thinking they making money. Yeah. Yeah. And plus the kids, their imagination is through the roof. Exactly. And it's and like you said, it's it's a fresh clay of mold. Mm-hmm. Even though it may have, you know, some somebody probably tried to shape shift this part, it's still gonna be like that really until 25. 25. You got long, you got a long a long time to try to mm-hmm. fix them. Cause it, it's some people that have been horrible. Like shit, mm-hmm. some of my friends have been horrible. But then like now, shit, some of them I feel like they're doing better than me. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't, yeah. they didn't really turn it around. It might, yeah. it might have took them longer right. than it took me to like realize that I need to change. Yeah. And shit, they turned it around and they're doing great though. So Yeah. And and that's because, you know what I mean? Like we said, they wanted to change. Yes, hundred percent. A lot of people they're comfortable with that same exact place. You can't yes. do nothing about that. So. A lot of a lot of shit happened like me. I ain't gonna say I'm a good kid. I yeah, was a good so what, kid. What was it like you as like, a kid? Shit. How we, were you as a kid? We were doing everything. Yeah. I mean, I've still haven't I've never been drunk. I've never been high in my life. Like peer mm-hmm. pressure don't work. So if it, if I ever did something, mm-hmm. I can't blame it on nobody because I wanted to do it. Yeah. Peer pressure don't work for me. So So why so coming up 
for any kid. It don't matter if you in a hood, if you in the suburbs, you in a mansion, uh-huh. whatever. Not drinking, never smoking. Uh huh. Kid, teenager, adult. What was the reason behind that? I don't know. I just never felt like it was for me. Mm. And I see other people. Yeah, sure <laughs> I that. see other people's yeah. shit look bad, man. Yeah. It's yeah. people to this day. It's people that's in my current life right mm-hmm. now. That's alcoholics, drunks. I I hate that shit. And me personally, I don't like to babysit adults. I will leave you. Mm. Like yeah. when, when we go places, everybody know. Ain't nobody getting in. Everybody know nobody's riding with Corey. Uh-huh. When I want to leave is when I want to leave. If I want to yeah. stay, I want to stay. And if you're drunk, I ain't got time to take care take of you. Care I got you, four yeah. kids at home. Right. You think I want to take care of you too? Right. Be, nah, you that's know? that's definitely the truth, <laughs> bro. Because like, well, first off, yeah, I as far as rewinding to how you say, like, it's a lot of alcoholics today. 100%. I think, yo, and I've cut <laughs> back from drinking. Like, yeah. I, I turns up. Yeah. Not lately, because I've just been trying to, you know what I'm saying, get my priorities lined up. But, you know what I'm saying, I like, coming up, partying, college, all that, yeah, I could turn up. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Just do it to where you conscious of, and you know what you're exactly. doing. Exactly. Like, but there's some people that they literally can't go out. They unless can't they enjoy themselves mm-hmm. unless they drunk. They drink to get drunk. Like a lot of people. Well, I guess that's the purpose. Drink to get drunk. I don't know. I've never, I don't know. It, it depends. Uh, <laughs> it depends. So like right now, I like, if I do drink, I'll do wine. Mm-hmm. I'll do champagne if it calls for it. He bougie, y'all. This man is hey, bougie. Hey, listen, I'm leveling up. <laughs> he bougie, If you're staying the same, then what you doing? <laughs> 100%. You know what I mean? Hey, like, I, I don't even drink Henny no more. Yeah. And everyone's a killer man now. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, if I'm if I'm with the ladies. Like, yeah. the, the, the biddies love Reposada and yeah, all that. Yeah, they do. So, if I'm with them, cool. We're going to get some tequila popping. But other than that, like, if it's on some, like, if it, like, really, like, last time I even drank anything, it was uh it was me and a shorty. Mm-hmm. And we was drinking wine. Two glasses of wine. That's it. But yeah. like you said, people drink to get drunk. I may drink if I do drink just to be in the moment yeah. with that person to kind of share that. 100%. But if I'm getting drunk, then it's like, yo, like first and, and foremost. Then, and like, even if you want to get that drunk, mm-hmm. environment plays a role in this. It do. So if you want to be like that, do it in the comfort of your home. Yeah. So ain't nobody got to take care of you. You uh-huh. won't drive. You won't do stupid mm-hmm. shit. Get fit. Try to fight. Try to fight, bro. Dude. Being with people that get OD drunk bro. and try to fight everybody, try to you fight the many, bouncers. You know how many of these we didn't dealt with every, like, that's why I don't go outside. And you're know? with them. Yeah. So, like, you're, like, there I, by I, social. I gotta, you're yeah, like, bro, come on, Like, bro. you got to do something. You part of this. Fuck, I man. I came here with you. So, if you, you didn't, you drunk, you didn't cuss this nigga out. That was, that was eight niggas about to jump you, bitch. We got to get jumped together. Because you don't know how to shut up. <laughs> I actually got into a, I was in a brawl that happened like that. <laughs> My man's tone, shout out my man Tone. He's drunk. We're at this, we're at this party. This is like years ago. We're at this party. We're in maybe Glen Burnie. And there was some dudes that nobody knew, no one seen, right? But everyone else kind of knew each other. So my man's tone, like, bruh, he drunk. Like, bruh, nigga, keep looking at me, bruh. <laughs> That's how I be. Mean. <laughs> like, I'm like, Tone, like. <sighs> I, he don't know you. You don't know him. I'm sure it ain't even like that. Yeah. So one thing led to the next. I think Tone said something to him. Next thing you know, it's like a 10 on 10 brawl outside. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? It was fun, but still could have went way left. Exactly. And it did for somebody that got knocked out clean. And that shit was crazy. But. Shit, yeah. We didn't been to a lot of them. Like when, you know, we from Annapolis. Mm-hmm. And we used to come up y'all way to the parties. Yeah. You know we used to come up seven nose. We used to come everywhere, mm-hmm. come to the parties. Mm-hmm. You know it's always a fight. Every time Annapolis and up, down road and up road get together, somebody going to fight. And shit, a couple of them, people got shot. Yeah, I, literally. Majority of the time. Not some of yeah. Majority of the time, yeah. somebody gets shot. I'm not even going to hold you. Like, I'm not going to say the name of it, but it's three letters in particular from uh, uh, Up Road that, like, that went to me, like, in the whole mm-hmm. Severn area. If it was a party... And just two of them were in there. A nigga get knocked out. Aubrey, I, look, you ain't even, look, we don't, we're just meeting each other. And I know the niggas you talking about. Mm-hmm. Come on, now these, mm-hmm. they, you go, they is knocking a nigga out. Every, I mean, it was like <laughs> literally every party, if you seen them in there. Yes. Somebody's then, getting knocked, knocked the and, fuck out. And then so, it'd be crazy because sometimes it might not be their fault. Like they might, somebody they might be looking at something. They mm-hmm. might how that situation is mm-hmm. looking at each other. Nigga might say the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ain't no squad because with them it ain't like oh we can defuse it. No, it's just go. Yeah, so and then it, and then it may be two of them 
Next thing you know, 20 minutes later, it's 10 of them. Yeah. <laughs> stomping a nigga out. I'm like, where did y'all come from? Y'all wasn't yeah. even in a party. Like, what the fuck did y'all come and from? crazy thing, bro, I'm from a Navis, so I I started hanging up there because I started messing with this girl named I don't mm -hmm. know if you know her. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So me and I'm going to I'm bleep that out. But yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to bleep her name out just for- Yeah. yeah, yeah. We went together for- we, we messed with each other for like- uh. Six years. Okay. Seven years. Yeah. Like, that's my man to this yeah, day. Yeah, like, yeah. I call her right now, she gonna answer. Uh-huh. But I met, I was hanging with Cam. Okay. Cam, that's my man. Cam but a wild nigga. how me and Cam <laughs> met each other, nigga, we was hopping the gate at the same time to go fuck her and somebody else. Are you serious? Oh, okay. So it was a two. Yeah, a two man. But wow. we didn't know each right, other. Right, so right, right. So we hopping the fence at the same time together. Yeah. He like, what, what, what? She like, yeah, da, da, da. So we going there. What? I taught Cam how I fucked you because Cam was watching the moves <laughs> I was putting the girl in and he was trying to, trying to learn my moves. I taught him some shit. <laughs> hey, bro. So that is that, crazy. After, after that, we just was cool as fuck for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Cam, my dog, bro. Shout yeah. out to Cam. Hell man. yeah. Yeah, and, and Cam won too. Cam, <laughs> Cam probably, what, like five, six, five, seven? Yeah, skinnier than me right now. Yeah, he will I'm, rock some shit quick though. Yeah, he not. He, oh my god, that motherfucker crazy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Cam. That is that is wild though. But yeah. Um. All right. So let's talk about outside of the area. Let's talk about some outside of Annapolis, right quick. Let's talk traveling mm -hmm. because goddamn, like just from it's like whatever I go to your page, it's like you're in this country, that country, that country. That's the goal. <laughs> How many countries have you been to? In the last two year and a half, two years, fifteen. 15 in the last two years, give or yeah. take. Yep. All right. So out of these 15, what's your favorite country that you've been to so far and why? I can't really decide, but I love mm. the Philippines. Philippines? Yeah. What do you love about Philippines? Hospitality. Mm. Um, like the people there are just so nice. Everybody nice. And I go there to do a mission trip. So we do a medical okay. mission trip. So we go there. We do for the first week I'm there, we do surgeries for, okay. for, for free. Hold on. So I did see a photo. Was that you actually performing surgery? Uh, assisting. Assisting with surgery? Yeah. On a human being? Yeah. How, what, what was that like? What did that... Because I'm looking at it, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't think he has a doctorate in anything. No, I'm a... I do sterile processing, so... Okay. That, so all the instruments, supplies, mm -hmm. and everything they use to do the surgery mm -hmm. comes from me. Yeah. So, but by me knowing the actual instruments and stuff... Yeah. I can scrub too, like as a yeah. scrub tech. How did did you learn that from watching Grey's Anatomy or uh, I never seen that before. Oh, yeah. But girls I've dealt with, they didn't watch the seasons a thousand times. Yo, people love and that joint like got like and it 20, got like 20 seasons. Yeah, yeah, people love Grey's but Anatomy. But no, I just like out there was like my first time ever scrubbing in was like in mm. Philippines type wow. of thing. Like other than that, I just do what I do home, I would do out there. So yeah. we do a mission trip there and Guatemala. Wow. So like is it did you feel like pressure? Because this is a human being, something could go wrong. No, because like, for the most the doctor, like for the most part, I was holding retractors for the most part. Mm -hmm. So just holding retractors or keeping like the body part open. Yeah. But then the doctor started asking me to do more. Like I'm, uh, what is it called? Fuck, I can't even think of the name. Like some type but, of assistant, right? Yeah, but I'm, I'm cutting the tissue and shit and really? all that. Yeah, hell yeah. What's that like? You can, Fire. Yeah, fine. okay. So you, you're, you're not I squeamish. Like it, okay. Yeah, because cause you got to think, I've been working in the health. I've been working in the hospital for 11 years. I've worked mm. at the, I have an actual job too. I work at okay. 9 to 5. So, so that's, <laughs> that's that. You're yeah, so I work, I work at the hospital. Okay. So. All right, cool. So that's nothing. Okay, damn, that's what's up. I saw also while in the Philippines, you met Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, hell yeah. That was my second time going there. We went to his city and did the... Um, as second mission, because so when we do the mission trip, it's always a different part of the air, like the country, yeah. but we go to a different part. Mm -hmm. So this time we went to General Santos. That's where he's from. So mm -hmm. we went to his boxing gym. I got signed boxing gloves by him. Right. Uh, the dinner we had was with him, his brother, his brother a boxer too, actually. Um, wow. And then the I think like the mayor or somebody or yeah. so, all them people. So damn, I know that they was had dope. like a big dinner for it. It was fire. Wow. What's he like, Manny himself? He cool. Yeah. He just smiles, I guess. He's he's PR trained. He's, he's yeah, trained yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Smiling way. Right, boys. right, right. So, so now nah, he, he cool, though. Damn. Like, you know, most people ain't going to come and even sit and eat dinner with us type mm -hmm. of thing. Right. Like here, like some of these people, they so, do you think they come into a, a dinner and come eat with us and walk around, take pictures? No, they're not doing that. They'll say what's up when the camera's there for their, yeah, you and know, walk out, like, publicity or PR, like yeah. you said, and then that'll be it. He stayed, ate dinner, everything. I think he... Had a speech, yeah, a little bit of everything. Stay for wow. the whole event for the most part. 
how how big or small should I say is Manny? Like he seems like a small dude. Yeah, he like everybody in the Philippines small. Yeah, they right. fucking tiny. Right. So he like he shorter. I think in the, he's shorter than me, maybe. Yeah, and I'm short. Totally. I'm like five seven. Yeah, he like he probably like what five 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 four some shit. Yeah, or is even that would be like the same height. He's short though, and will rock some shit. Yeah, he knocking shit out. I wouldn't fight him personally. No. no, he could be sixty. Yeah, would you, would you fight Mike Tyson today? Fuck no. Yeah, you see the training videos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's moving. He's moving. Um, uh, him and Jake Paul are they still fighting? Yeah, yeah. I think got rescheduled for like a couple months later. How do you think that'll go? I want Mike to win, of yeah. course. You want Mike to win. Owes. Do you think Mike will win? It might be tough because Jake Paul is like, he's strong. Yeah, he's he not, he not. He not the best boxer. He right, don't have he's the best raw. skills, but he does have skills, what most mm -hmm. people don't understand. Like, he actually has trained and he actually do have skills. Right. It's not like he just, but I think for him to test his skills, he needs to go fight like an actual boxer. Yeah. And not an old ass boxer like Mike Tyson. Or or a young UFC dude. Like yeah. he doesn't fight actual boxers. Yeah, and which... he fight like oh damn near retired UFC people. Yeah, yeah. I don't see it happening. I mean, I'm we want it because we're like, yo, you're not really a boxer. Fight a boxer. But if and I'm he a fucking he's like a heavyweight. Yeah. He's so like, you have like to fight 200. like one like the one of them Joshua people mm -hmm. right now. They they will put his dick in the dirt. Yeah. But and... if he beat one of them, then you could get credit from everybody. But so. he's not doing it. Yeah, but and... you you should though. He should. Give you... We want it, but yeah. I'm not blaming him. Like he's comfortably yeah. finessing the boxing world. Hundred percent. And he's made more money than majority of them already. Like I, I'm, I can't be mad at it. And he's bringing, but he's also bringing, like people hate him, but he's brought way more money than by to boxing ever. So y'all yeah. gotta appreciate what he's doing too. And for all the UFC fighters, they've never made that much money. Right. They making five hundred thousand a fight, something yeah. like that. He's get or. Not even that. Some of them making way less than that. Yeah. 100000 a yeah. fight, 50000 mm -hmm. He's getting y'all millions on millions for a fight. Whether you're getting your ass knocked out or something, but you're getting paid so many millions, you don't even give a fuck. That's why so many people are calling them out to fight. Like, yeah. yeah, they probably like, oh, you a bitch, I'll beat your ass. But they know it's a ticket. Yeah, 100%. Shit. Would you fight Jake Paul today? Fuck For no. two mil. Oh, yeah. Bro. Two mil. I'm going getting that bitch with Tank for two mil. I'm getting knocked out. But you will fight Tank for two mil. Yes, that's two million. Yeah, you're going to have two he million. He might hit me with a body shot. I'm going to do it. Ryan Goss, I'm not getting back Fuck up. a body shot. You're always going to have brain damage. 100%. <laughs> I know. Well, most people, they, I mean, what do they say? You get knocked down, just stay down. Yeah. It's going to be something in my head. Stay down. I'm okay. Say, I am. <laughs> okay, well, how about this? It's a clause. You fight Tank, but you have to at least go three rounds. No. If you don't go three rounds, you don't get paid the two million. No. no. <laughs> Circumstances. <laughs> Yeah. If I'm if I get the proper training for a year, uh huh. Yes. Because okay. I'll know how to at least weave a punch. Yeah. I might not get hit with the the hardest punch. Right. I know how to. I will run around the ring. Yeah. One thing about Tank, if he don't know that I'm, I don't know no. He gonna try to figure me out the first couple of rounds anyway. Yeah. He don't know that I'm a. I, I super suck at boxing. Right. He. I might have got trained by the best. You yeah. never know. I yeah. might not slip a punch. Yeah. Get a but first round he try to like, say he just test you out with some jabs and he see your movement he like oh hold on he knows some shit let me try to put his ass down yeah. now but no how you say like he does figure shit out like especially his last fight with That's um old boy yeah. from I think Detroit like it's cr like put the, his dick in the dirt yeah and you could see the first few rounds he was just walking him down just yeah. letting him and, like really and figure him out because he wouldn't he didn't expect him to even come out like that mm -hmm. like he say he fight every fight a different yeah which is I think is dope yeah yeah that's my that's my favorite box I went to, I've been to two of his matches yeah but so I'd I, rather watch it on TV you it's, said you'd rather watch it's it on better TV? on TV how so it's 4K up close and personal mm. there I like I. I went, I said, I'm on the floor. I'm right behind the floor. Like, uh -huh. I have great seats. I, yeah. I'm on the floor. So, I still rather see it. Really? Yes, uh, hell yeah. I've never been to a boxing uh, boxing match before, uh, but I always imagined it would be better in person because, like, the energy is the, felt. Like, yeah, you can but, feel when someone's ready to get knocked but, down. You feel the people going crazy. But when you, like, like say if you got, like, good seats and you, like, okay, the floor here, you right here, mm -hmm. but... Uh, you would think that's close. That mm -hmm. shit is not that. It's close, but it ain't like okay. you can look. You got to think. And then seats are lower than the actual ring kind. Right. So it's like. Oh, so you, yeah. You got to think the camera's up. in the ring. Yeah. You can see yeah. everything. Up close. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Yeah. I love live entertainment just in general myself. That was my first time ever. 
to yeah. anything, oh, to anything, anything live. professional. Really? And that was like a couple of years ago. I've, yeah. I've never, it's so, like when people be laughing because I post so much stuff of everything I've never done before. Mm-hmm. And it's so much I've never done. I I well, just, my first time going fishing was like recently. Yeah. Um, fuck, I've never been to, my first time going to an NFL game was last year. How was that for you? Um, I'll never do it again because the experience not going to be the same because I was on the field. I came out with the players. What I, what team was this? Steelers. Steelers, okay. So I am like came out with the players. Uh-huh. Fucking Wiz performed. We were backstage. We are like, mm. Wiz has managed all that shit. Yeah. Because my man, he sung the national anthem there. Okay. And yeah. so, so the, experience, the experience not going to be the same. It'll never be topped. So It'll never like, be topped because I've had like the... VIP experience. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. I don't think I would do that again. I'll take my kids though. That makes but. sense. I love football games. Like that's my thing. Like, especially since moving to North Carolina, mm-hmm. they take college football serious out here in the South. Oh yeah, hell yeah. And um first like my first year moving out here a couple months, I went to Georgia versus Clemson college football game. That was by far the most lit live experience I've ever experienced in my life. Like, cause Georgia, they went on to win a national championship that year, That's and fire. it's at the Panther Stadium, and I'm sitting low. Mm. I'm not going to go into details, but I, I finesse tickets, so <laughs> I'm sitting like I buy, I buy uh, sky rises. What's some shit? Nosebleeds. Nosebleeds, yeah. And I'm down low. I'm not going to say how. If you want, we could discuss off camera. But I'm sitting low, yeah. And I'm on the Georgia side, and like I said, in the South College football, they go crazy about that shit. Def like it, that I was. Might, I different. might gotta. You gotta hit me up. I'll come to one. SEC. Shit. They got one out here September seventh. Uh, Tennessee's coming to town. So if you if you're trying to experience it, let me know. Yeah, that I shit, might. I might gotta experience that. That shit is different, bro. Um. All right. So real quick, just to touch back with traveling uh, to these different countries. Let me ask you, in general, what's it like when you go to a different country and come back to the states? Depending where you go, um, mm-hmm. you well first once you get there you're gonna notice how. Um, hmm, I mean, how the best way to put this? I think I know where you're going, but go ahead and go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you was a king. Uh huh. You was a fucking king over yeah. there. Yeah. Everybody is catering to you, hundred mm-hmm. percent. And like, especially if you're just from America, mm-hmm. but then you're American. And you black. Mm. And a lot of these places, they love black people. They love black men. They you as a king. Yeah. Hundred percent. You can take that and think of that however you want to think of that. But any any aspect, you as a king there. So that but, goes. But coming back home, uh-huh. you feel like you'll just notice how fucked up America is. Like the shit they show you on TV is not how it is in these countries. Yeah. That's perception based. Yeah. Then when you actually go there, you like. This shit is not like this, bro. Mm-hmm. Like most of the beautiful, like they only show you on TV, feed the children Africa shit. Like right. if you go to fucking Africa, yeah, it is some fucked up super. But right, most of the be- most beautiful places are in Africa. Mm. Like I've been to Egypt, mm. fire, yeah, fire, yeah. But I stayed in the hood in Egypt. I like to stay with the people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. there with the beggars and the poor mm-hmm. people and all that stuff. But. You just get to, but then I get to experience that. And then I went to so many other places like Cairo, Egypt. That's where the pyramids is. Mm -hmm. And that's like the capital. Yeah. It's like it's small, but it's like fucking 10 million people live there. So it's like super populated, poor populated. But then I went to like Luxor, Aswan, Alexandria. Mm -hmm. And those places was like beautiful Mm -hmm. and nice. Yeah. Like Cairo, Deserts, de- desert roads. No, yeah. sh- you can't see no streets. Right. You might pull out, you see a damn donkey coming this way. Da da da. Yeah. But then when you go to the other places, like country, and then you go to the other places, like a city. Mm-hmm. Like I ate on this restaurant on the water out there. Mm. Got fresh fish, everything. So mm. wonderful. So, let's talk about that as far as the food in these food. other places compared to back home. Egypt. Mm-hmm. I ain't recommend. I didn't see one cow out there, bitch, and they kept saying this is beef. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see one cow the whole time I was there. I'm letting y'all know I didn't see one cow. Not hey, at all. That's that. Uh, I swear I didn't see a cow. That's that good uh, Chinese food <laughs> pigeon. Yeah, pigeon, uh, pigeon <laughs> chicken. Yeah. yeah. So Egypt was probably like the my worst food experience, mm-hmm. but I understand it. Yeah. Um, I like 
the all the Asian countries I've been to. They, yeah, I can imagine all the Asian countries. Like I don't even eat McDonald's home, mm-hmm. but I eat McDonald's in Japan, of course. Yeah. You got to. It's like, yeah. and then like their seven ele- like they Seven Elevens are like famous for food. Like they got good food in the Seven Elevens out Damn. there. So, and then what else? Like most of them places, like when you go, they got fresh fish, fresh seafood, mm-hmm. and you just tell them how you want to prepare it. Mm. And most of these places, yeah, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, to re- to rewind back a little bit, you said when you go to these other countries, you come back home, you really see how fucked up it is. Hundred back home, like because they poor, but mm-hmm. they happy. Mm. Like it don't matter how much money you got here, you're yeah. fucking miserable here. Mm. Like when I go out there, bro, I went out last. I was just in. Uh, Asia for a whole um a whole a whole month mm-hmm. and fuck it I ain't had that much money on me mm. I said majority of the time I was there I didn't have to spend no money yeah like you it's to the point where you just live and you just having fun yeah like you and then your money of course your money is worth way more over there too mm-hmm. in some of these countries yeah but I see how they do with so little mm-hmm. and they just appreciate the little shit that they have. Yeah. You and then I like, like I said, I like to stay with the people, experience mm-hmm. the culture wherever I'm going. So I appreciate it just like they appreciate it. And it's like, mm-hmm. I got all this shit here. They have so much less and we are having way more fun here. Why do you think that is that other countries just seem overall more happy? more gratitude towards life than it is with America. And we're like, what, the rich, one of the richest nations, right? The most free, you yeah, know what I mean? Free. Like, a lot and of- I don't see where the, where, how are we free? Mm. I feel like them people way more free. Yeah. Of course, other countries different, right? but right. majority of the countries I've been to, I feel like they way more free. Like, mm. like here, the government is horrible. Yeah. They control every damn thing. Everything. Like out there. And it's like a, TV show now at this point, bro. Yes. Like with everything going yeah. <laughs> on, bro. Like it's we have to be the lock and laughing stock when it comes yes. to like our uh, politics. Bro, and they shit they now, laughing bro. at us like hell. Yeah, and you, like you say, and it's all on how they they brought up over there. Mm. So they they come up like you say they come up way different, mm. and so they appreciate more. Like I met so many like doing the medical stuff, mm. so many nurses and so much stuff like that. Like yeah. they take they take what they doing serious, mm. like. They like a lot of them. They they train and get all their certificate and everything, and then they come over here to work, type mm-hmm. of thing. Like that's a goal of them to come up because obviously, so they can provide for their family. Right. But they take over there. They take everything so serious. Like my man, Doctor Al, the youngest doctor I ever met. Mm-hmm. He graduated at sixteen. Damn. And then he was, a, what? he was a doctor, like high school at sixteen. Damn. And then he was a doctor. He a doctor. So I met him recently. He was yeah. like. 25, like full blown doctor. Doctor, like, God like damn. he probably was younger than 25 when I first met him. Yeah, like two years ago. Right, but he a doctor. Wow, I'm like, what the hell? You could be this young and be a doctor? Yeah, because I, I just met him. Like he was staying at the house one night with us out there. I'm trying to figure out who the fuck is this that's with yeah. us. And then I find out, I'm like, oh shit, this motherfucker's a doctor. A doctor. And then we end up cool. Yeah. We all went out after the mission. We go out to a couple places, mm-hmm. have fun. Yeah. This one shit, this one guy, this the craziest shit I done mm-hmm. heard. Well, not even her, I seen it. Yeah. On two eyes. One guy I met in um uh Thailand. Mm-hmm. He just was in Afghanistan. Like these places I never even knew that you could even fucking travel to. Mm-hmm. He was in Afghanistan, arm wrestling the Taliban, having a good time in Afghanistan. So what I say, like everything is perception based. Like yeah. they never gonna tell you that you can really go over there and enjoy yourself because everything is not like that. Right. Oh yeah, and and we're famous for well, America's famous for that. For how you said, like they'll show you the worst uh-huh. in other countries because they don't want you to go and there. you imagine it. Mm-hmm. It's the same way with news and broadcasting with cities yes. in America. Hundred percent. Like how many people. When you when majority of people, if you mention Chicago, what do they think? I was ready to say that. They think Chirac. Yeah, that's the worst place ever. Yeah. I've been to Chicago. I went last year. Chicago is fucking beautiful. And I keep and hearing it. Dope. Everybody keep telling me it's beautiful there. Chicago is so dope. It's like a slightly more spread out New York City. Uh-huh. Like like New, you know, New York is congested. Chicago's like is is on the water, very tall, beautiful buildings. 
and they're, they're like their scenery on the water very nice but it's more spread out but chicago's huge but chicago is fucking dope but again going back to what uh what they what they televise what they want to pump 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 out there they never going to show you nothing good nah i've never seen nothing good about chicago unless people that travel there and tell me like bro it's beautiful here it's so dope it is so dope. I went last year. I have to go back. We went because my brother graduated from uh, the Navy Academy um, Fire. right outside. So we got to spend the day in Chicago. Put up on Donda House where Kanye grew up. Took a picture yeah. in front of it. Fire as hell. But I have to go back. Like Chicago's dope. Chicago yeah, is I'm, dope. I haven't been. It's a, well, I haven't been to a lot of states. Because mm -hmm. once I start traveling, my goal was to hit all the states. Mm -hmm. And then I start traveling other countries. countries. Say, ah, it's different. Fuck the states. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's different going to other countries. Yeah. Like to the point, like then as you travel so much, you just it's just different now. Like mm -hmm. in the states, I only travel with a book bag. Like I don't care to take nothing. Yeah, I just take a book bag. I, want, I don't even. I used to travel with suitcase, this that, mm -hmm. and that. Hell no, just a book bag. Why That's, is that? It's pointless. Mm. I ain't really. I don't really need. What do I need all this stuff for? Yeah. All you need is shorts, tees, and mm. boxes and just socks. Some, yeah, just enjoy the vibe. Shoes and some sandals. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's hard, man. Um, so earlier you mentioned how one thing you notice in general, like they just treat black men mm -hmm. from America specifically different. They treat us like royalty in these other countries. Yes. And my mom lived in Germany. I visited her. And um, yeah, she would tell me the same thing. She's like, yo, you coming out here? Like they, yeah. They love you. And, and it's true. Let me ask you something. But when, but. Go ahead. To the. From the media and all that, you would think that you hated that because mm -hmm. all it is is hate. Right. So well, some it's probably some it cases. It is some. No, hundred yeah, yeah, percent yeah, yeah, yeah. some. But they don't majority. portray it. They don't portray right. the good stuff. Right. Majority. <laughs> right. So also, let me ask you: Are you a passport, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of stamps on my passport, brother. <laughs> okay, leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, a lot of stamps yeah, yeah. on my passport. Good answer. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. <laughs> Um, okay, so overall, what's your take on the whole passport bro, bro movement? I don't see nothing wrong with it. Yeah. If you don't have a lady at home, mm -hmm. go out there because the women going to treat you way better everywhere. Mm. Like, even if it wasn't nothing like sexual, mm -hmm. just women in general, yeah. like general, they cater they cater to, in them cultures, they cater to the man. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be taken care of regardless. You're going to be yeah. fed. You're going to be everything. Yeah, yeah. Like... And so, then, so for right. them, like this, America, y'all got the shit fucked up because hoes here don't actually think they're hoes or don't think they're prostitutes. Cause Yo! Because <laughs> cause you can go there, f $15 and go get it. You bitches here want $40 and you ain't doing half the shit that they going to do. And, and get, and get, yo, they and out they and y'all feel disrespected if somebody calling you a prostitute, but Yo. you you're if you're doing something and you want money in return, you're a prostitute. Over there, it's straight they, to the fucking point. Over, over there, it's straight to the point. And they fucking they don't they don't they not offended about nothing because they know what the fuck it is. Y'all get offended because y'all trying to portray something that you're not. Bro. You want you you're you don't want to be what you are. Be yourself. Pussies. I say the exact same thing. My one of my slogans, I gotta get it on the shirt, is day day let a hoes. And the reason why I say that is because hoes, real hoes, live in their truth. Yes, they do. I oh know some God. real hoes. I that, know some real hoes here. And they, exactly. And they live in their truth. But then on the flip side, we're talking about passport bros. You got women that'll be mad at dudes and be like, oh, you're just going out there to fuck with them prostitutes. But yet you literally got fucked for a nice meal in a bag. What's the difference? Or $40. That $40 special. Yes. They'll do it every time. Like, and they get mad if they get mad at prostitutes at other countries or prostitutes here. You'll have a chick that'll be like, oh, she's a hooker. She's a whore. You are too. You're just, you're just sprinkling glitter on shit. That's all it is. Easily. I see and it's the same like, shit. <laughs> I don't understand these women. I but know. I mean, men too, because men go mm -hmm. do what they do too. Mm -hmm. Whatever your preference is, you go do whatever the fuck you're going to do. But where do you but, think that came from today where it's normalized? Pro they're, they're trying to transform prostitution. It's still prostitution mm -hmm. and they're normalizing it. But then they'll get upset if you come at them in that way or straight up say this is prostitution. Yeah, but y'all but y'all the ones normalize it because mm -hmm. all y'all talk about is fucking get some money. Mm -hmm. So it's like fucking pull it back. That's prostitution. You look up the definition of prostitution. You are a prostitute. Mm -hmm. So... You can't really be mad at that. Yeah. And out there, and I'm going to be honest with y'all, 
I'm going to be completely honest. Please do. You here? You won a big couple thousand dollars. A f- Mm-mm-mm. It's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, bro, a fucking five, a five there's a 10 here. Mm, so it's like, right. so bitch, stay in your place. Mm. Like, in, in the most respectful way, stay yeah. in your place. You can't yeah. be mad at them. They look better than you, any cheaper than you. So right. what, how, you hating. Well, you just hating you at have this no, point. You have no leverage to no fight No leverage that. at all. Yeah. Like, Because yeah. yeah, if you were to get dropped off in America, what you, okay, let's do this. A chick say, mm. I can't fuck with a dude if he can't pay my bills. Or I can't fuck with a dude if he don't give me at least $500 out here, right? Yeah. Go to these, go to the DR. Okay, yeah, you cute in Concord, North Carolina. Five hundred gonna get you ten of them. You cute, you cute in 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 Glen Burnie, Maryland, Annapolis, Maryland. Go to the DR. Yes, and they're gonna make you look like nothing. Were they tens? Yes, out here easily. Go to the DR and think if you're still gonna get a hundred dollars a pop. Yes, and a lot of women, a lot of women don't like it because if they come to these certain places with their guy, mm-hmm. the focus is not on. Getting the women, the women, mm. it's all women there. Mm-hmm. The focus is on the men. They're not the hot topic anymore mm-hmm. when they go to these places. Home, you might be hot. You go right. to the other place, you ain't hot because mm. it's women that look better than you. Yeah. You think the black guys on the resort that you go to is going to want you? No, they're coming out here for that, not mm. you. So yeah. when you go to these places, you feel left out, mm-hmm. yeah. which is understandable. Yeah. But these guys coming here for that. Right. They're not coming here for this. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's... Man, the, the the whole perception of, of, around a lot of this shit in America is definitely very misconstrued. Yes. My um, my homie, <laughs> he was just in DR like two weeks ago, and I go to work. He was my co. No, he works at the gym I used to work at, but I still work out at. And I go there. He's like, "Bruh, day." And I I never even been to the DR. He's like, "Bro, I would, bro, <laughs> two hundred dollars in the DR, bro, a king." A king, bro. King. He's like, bro. I I've never. That was the greatest week of my life. Two hundred dollars, and that's all you need because yeah. your money is worth more, and that shit stretches and go a long way, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like your your forty dollar hair might be might be enough for about three, four, three or four of them. There, you never know. Yeah, and that's what he was saying. Like shit, you, you shit out here. You need at least. And mind you, we're talking about chicks we never met. Out there, forty dollars straight to the point. Out here, a hundred dollars for a date, all that shit. And they're gonna decide if they want to go on another date. Mm-hmm. That's this, another hundred dollars, like, fifty for drinks. Like back back in the day, <laughs> like back in the day, we could have, we used to could get y'all with that. Oh, we just met to tear you up. Yeah, like yeah, now, yeah. there was the boy that them rappers, them female rappers, fucking the game up fucking for us right now. Y'all want up, a lot of bro. money. Y'all want a lot of shit these days. That's why, like. Where I'm at right now, like I'm, I'm so I, I'm, because I'm just not looking for nothing serious right now. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. So like, and there's women out here that just want to fucking ask it, like a friends with benefits. Yes, it is. I've I've had some of them. I've had a lot of them. Uh, exactly. <laughs> like, what? Like, give, give me like, a gold jacket. Like, if it comes that's what down I'm saying. That. Like like me and my brother. Like, as far as like women, we didn't tour a lot of them apart. Like mm-hmm. like women, like we're known for we yeah. we know like. Known pussy kids, yeah, man. Yeah, and I'm, it is and what you it gotta is. think I got four kids. My brother got six kids. It is what it Shit, is. It is what it is. We what you four. think that's gonna repel the chicks? Yeah, nah, they like they like they it even more because of that. Which is and I tell people that all the time. Like the first thing I was ever told, um, if you have kids, no girls gonna want you. I had kids and I feel like it just multiplied each time I had another kid. And I'm like, mm. This shit is bad, mm. but it's also because I actually do take care of my kids and I provide and I do. It's and a that's what, and exactly, it's and a they love that because they feel they like as though see. okay, if I get him, he's gonna take care of my. Family. He mm-hmm. he's a he's, he's a man at the end of the day. Yeah, he might not be the best boyfriend mm-hmm. at that time, but he's a great man mm. and take care of responsibilities. Yeah, so they see that. Yeah. And you're not the first person. I got plenty of friends with kids. At this point, I'm like the last of the Mohican. But, and they, few of them told me the exact same thing. Exactly. Be like, Bro. yo, I, like if I'm with my, if they with their daughter out and it's just them and their daughter, like at the mall or something, mm-hmm. like they, it's crazy. Magnet. Yeah. They just look at you like, oh my. And yeah. then me, I'm, I'm fine. Like a lot of people can't handle their kids alone. Shit, mm-hmm. I'll take all four of mine and we'll go out the mall. We'll go yeah. anywhere. So I can do whatever with my kids. Yeah. So. Like I ain't got, I got three baby mothers. I don't got no, I ain't got like no problems. Like no, I can do whatever I want with my kids whenever mm-hmm. I want my kids and every day. So yeah, I don't got no problems. Um, all right, so let me ask you this. 
We're both 29 years old. Uh, do you want to get married? No. Mm. Why is that? It's a business. It is a very lopsided business deal. It's a business. If I'm if I love you and I fuck with you, we good that way. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we need to sign a piece of paper to prove my love for you. I don't need to buy a expensive ass ring that was pointless. We could have bought a house. We could have started a business. It's a waste of fucking money. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying for no big ass wedding. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of fucking money. I I don't care for money. I care about the freedom that money gives us. Mm -hmm. So. That's fucking with my freedom. I'm yeah. wasting money doing that. I need to, <laughs> it's other shit that we could be doing. Yeah. And then not only that, like what's hers is yours and vice versa. Yes. Like the assets if, are if combined. You, if you point. leave me and you ain't work for, you ain't help with none of this shit. Obviously, if I get rich, yo, with Boosie say you rich and you marry your bitch, get a prenup. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. But I'm broke and I'm still going to get a prenup. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Nah, so I, I heard, um, I saw a quote by the game, the rapper. He said, marriage is basically like, saying i bet half of my shit or all of my shit that we can stay together yeah that's i was like wow that's like i've seen and heard of like some crazy situations like yeah. there's no way in hell i bought this house but i gotta get out the house i gotta leave you the house i gotta find somewhere to stay and i still gotta pay for everything in this motherfucker mm -hmm. fuck yeah. out i would burn that bitch down first yeah and i think that's one of the reasons why you you see one of the reasons, the other reason is the other side of the coin, which we'll get to. Well, you'll see like a lot of millennial men saying they're like opposed to marriage. They're not really for marriage because we're starting to realize, and it's always been out there. Look how many, how many divorce cases do you know and, were in favor of the man? And that's what I, 100%. And none of them. <laughs> but what I'm getting to, marriages will never last no more because there's no more gender roles. Mm. Marriages lasted when there was gender roles. Mm -hmm. Your grandparents been together for seventy years. Everybody else get married. The divorce rate is like what fucking over. Got so, well over fifty percent. Yeah, it's over fifty. Yeah, yeah. every every yeah. like that shit don't last because there's no gender roles. Which I can't blame that for changing because in this society it's hard for a man to just provide. Yeah, and the female not do nothing either because shit is way too expensive. But. If you can do it, I guarantee, I can't say that because shit, these days the women is yeah. terrible. They the, cheating on you. You at work, working, paying for everything, they still cheating on and you. And not so. only that, like it's kind of shifting to where the women now are- Are the men. Yeah, they make more money. Yes. They're more educated. They're becoming more dominant. Yes, 100%. And, you know, like, and just to keep it a buck, we ain't going to just only talk about the women. Men are becoming more bitches nowadays. Yeah. Oh, you know 100%, what I'm saying? So yes. Because of that shift as well, it's like it can't mesh because it's not meant for the woman to be the man and the man to be the woman. At all. It's and not it's, meant. I mean, they got 20. We're going to get canceled. Fuck it. It's it is what it is. It's 20,000 genders. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D fucking yeah. community. Yeah. That shit is crazy. Yeah. It's a male and female. You is what you is. You like what you like. I have a million gay friends and they say the same thing as me. Yeah. You are what you are. Yeah. You're, you're speaking on where like it's forced like how yeah, it's, it's forced especially upon kids now yeah. bro and, and you're, i don't like that you're because, someone with kids you yeah, have four so, kids so when they come out and say oh this character was gay mm -hmm. how the fuck can this character be gay what makes this character gay after 50 years like right. why, now, why they all, of sudden, all of a sudden they're gay yeah what the or fuck? or like how they even push that on child characters and cartoons mm -hmm. and shows to where they're what is it by whatever yeah, the fuck like, it's called what the fuck do they need to know this for yeah like yeah. they'll learn it as they get older, but why you don't have to force this on? Yeah, because and like we said, kids are sponges. They're they're clay. So if you just keep saying, "Oh, it's it's, it's good to be this. It's good to be gay. It's good to be trans," a child is going to be curious and say, "Hmm, I want to see what it's like." Fuck what it, you, why not? What you think about um, Dwayne Wade's son? Well, yes, yeah, son, son, I, daughter. Yeah, 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 I don't. Say I, no, I, I'm. I go off of what you were by bi bi biologically born as. Yes. Um. I mean, again, I don't have no problem with anyone that's gay or trans. No problem at all. I just feel like he's way too young for the shit that they didn't let him do. Yeah, I would. I would. Once he get old, I would. Yeah, I would be like, okay, once you become an adult, if you're truly sure about it, we'll proceed. But to like, especially with Dwayne, to just dive off the deep end at such a young age, as far as the child and you know, what I'm saying with the whole, I think he like you know has like a nail color care coming out, and it's all pertained or catered towards his, one his son. I, I, again, I, I think I would just ease into it. I wouldn't. 100%. I wouldn't jump straight off the deep end like with that. a child. I yeah. would ease into it. Be like, I mean, okay, we'll see. 
you know how like we when we were kids, we would tell our mom we wanted to do yes. something, we wanted to be something. You might be like, okay, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, like cause you want cause you know you're a child, you're yeah. just imaginative. So I wouldn't jump off the deep and, end. And I say that because I've watched the um, you know, on Instagram you see all the shit that come on. Mm-hmm. So is this one guy, he started to transition mm-hmm. and then that was he said it's like the worst thing he's ever done in his you life. You see that a lot. Yeah, and it's like the worst thing he ever did in his life. So now like it's so many complications and mm-hmm. so many so it's like it's big health issues in the shit. Yeah. So it's like Yeah, you see that a lot, especially with those that get the surgery. Try to kill themselves yeah. and all this stuff after. Yeah. So it's like Yeah. Yeah, especially with the surgery. Time. Yeah, just take your fucking time. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't let him. Well, I think they don't. I don't think he got the surgery. I have no way, son. I don't think some uh, girl. I don't, I don't, like I said, and I'm only speaking from social media stuff. Yeah, and I just, a, whatever I see on social media, yeah, I, yeah. I don't really go. And you're and you're an actual parent yourself, yeah, so yeah. it only makes sense. But I don't think that. But now, if he would have got the surgery as a kid for a sur- <laughs> for a kid to get a trans surgery is insane. Yeah, because you see so many stories, like you said, where they get older. And they're like, oh man, I regret it so much. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I literally like chopped off something. You know what I'm saying? Because of a, a mindset that I had at 20. Like yes. we said, when our 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 decision making development isn't even fully developed until 25. Exactly. So by the time they're 26, you're like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want I could be using this thing right now because maybe I want to be this way now. But that's like that's like I know it's kind of that's like getting a bad tattoo at 16 years old. Hundred percent. I got <laughs> fuck. I had tattoos in my first. First tattoo was in middle school, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got a regrettable tattoo, right? Yes. And it's like, okay, at the moment you were hype. Yeah, I'm the man. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I'm in, I'm in middle school. I got tattoos. Showing it off and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And then now you're like, eh, I, I gotta get this bitch covered. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I could have put something else there. Um, okay, so like I said, we're both 29 years old. Let me ask you, how do you feel about turning 30, entering the 30s? I've always told people when you turn 30, you old as fuck. But now it's like, I'm turning 30, so I'm like, I don't say it no yeah, more. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I don't say it as much now. Yeah. But fuck, we getting old. Yeah. How the fuck did we make it to 30 this quick? Quick as shit. Like, I, I feel like we was just in school. Like, And it's crazy because we still at that age, we could date the mother or the daughter. Mm-hmm. We still at the age where we can hang with the older crowd or the younger crowd. Yep. We still at the age where... Yeah. We at that age. It is hella so, great. Area. So we at that. It's crazy because yeah. like some of the like some of the people I would hang with till the, like right now mm-hmm. would be. It might be somebody that's twenty one or something like that, but their head is on straight. Right. Like I can hang with them, and you would never know that they we ain't the same age. Right. But then you can hang with the old heads too. Yeah. So we at we at we at like the perfect age yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I I remember when I first moved to Charlotte. When I first moved to Charlotte, I was 26, 25, 26. It's crazy. I'm at Walmart and I'm taking a cart back to the. But you could pass for 35. Yeah, yeah I think I don't go. This oh, shit I've don't grow. Been. This yeah. shit don't grow. <laughs> hey man, take advantage. Yeah, I know. If you I got shit. a baby face, bro, take advantage. Bro, I, ha- I don't even have hair. Like I don't even have hair on my arms. Yeah, bro. Hey, take advantage. I- I'll say this one thing about us turning 30, like. Like especially with millennials, some a lot of us, some of us are burnt out. But like with a lot <laughs> of us, majority of us yeah, burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. But with like the ones that we taking care of ourselves, like we doing the proper things, we look younger than some of these Gen Zs. Yeah, hundred percent. They all look older than me. They burnt the fuck out. And no, and then to talk about like to go back, like to talk about some of the guys that we used to be with at some of these mm-hmm. parties, them mm-hmm. niggas always looked older than yeah. us. Like we, I was always think by me not bearing, I think some of these guys are adults. Yeah. Whole time we the same age, like there's no age. way I'm this little right. and y'all like this yeah. and this yeah. big and yeah. we fucking like 15 or 16. You mm-hmm. look 30 already. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's crazier now, bro. Like with these, especially like football players, because you know football is my thing, so I yeah. follow it and I'll see these high school football players, full grown beards, going everything. bald, six five, two twenty. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is going on? And it a lot is contributed towards the food. Yeah, 100%. if we if we if we want to go down that route, a lot is contributed towards the food. But um, yeah, no, like you said, um, I'm it is a great place to be in as far as turning. I think thirty is going to be bomb and shit. I think it's going to be the peak, or well, not the peak, the prime. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully for me, hopefully. Mm-hmm. I feel like we get old, but mm-hmm. hopefully thirty be. Phew, that's my goals. It I always is. told everybody I was going to retire by thirty. So hopefully, yeah. It, it I is. I can say bro. hopefully it's gonna happen. It's gonna it, happen. There we go. I like and that. then, yeah. fuck, I haven't been home for my birthday. I don't think the last three, two years. This mm-hmm. will be the third on my thirtieth. I'm not even gonna be home. Where you gonna be? In Asia. 
Asia, nice. So I don't know where I want to spend my actual birthday. I know the first week of February, I'm in Philippines doing mm -hmm. a mission trip. Mm -hmm. I know I want to go to Vietnam. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a whole week there. Yeah. If I do a whole week there, I'm probably going to be there on my birthday. Nice. I know I'm going to stop back in Thailand. Yeah. Because I'm supposed to get a condo out there, too. Nice. And man, one of my good up. friends just moved there yesterday. To Thailand? And, yeah. And then my other man that was on a mission trip with friend, he just officially moved there because he was living between there and Philippines, mm -hmm. but he lived there now. Wow. A um, couple other people. So, like, a lot of these places, I gotta be knowing people, so yeah, it's, it's yeah. easier for me. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. It, it's a mental thing. Yeah. Because I heard you a few times say, oh, man, I feel like we're getting old. It's a mental thing, bro. This is prime. I think 30... I think... I know that 30s is going to be... The 20s was get the lessons and the bullshit out the way uh -huh. and set up that foundation. Plant the seeds to where the foundation can be set for 30s. And then I think 40s is where you truly enjoy the seeds of the labor coming from that foundation or that uh, base that you set from the tree in the 30s. That's how I see it. If we do it correctly. Let's let's talk about that. <laughs> we got... If we do it correctly... Mm -hmm. It's accomplishable. We get we can accomplish anything. Well, but a lot of people don't do. I don't know. I just feel like they don't do it correctly. Cause I, me personally, I don't want to be fucking 60, 70, 80 still working. Working. I don't want to do it. Like it's insane. Like me at the hospital, I'm a manager now. So mm -hmm. it's like hey, most people in this position, one, they're not black. Mm -hmm. Two, they not as young as bro. I'm, I'm probably the, I think I'm the youngest manager in this hospital. Yeah. So Everybody else is probably twice my age. Mm. So, so when you and say, most of my and all my employees, uh, mm -hmm. majority of them older, way older than me. I'm, yeah, I'm the youngest. Everything to do it to do this shit there. So you're a manager at a young age. You have your own business. You travel a lot. It's a lot of things that. Well, you're you're a successful person. Um, from the outside looking in and just from the conversation that we're having. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it depends as far as your later years on whether or not you do the things right. Yes. So what does that look like? Like how how would you determine from yourself or someone else if they're doing things right to be successful in life? For the most part, you need to, like a lot of people get into things because it's cool. Mm -hmm. You need to get get into something that aligns with you. So you don't want to ever, anything you do or business you start, you don't want to see it as like, you don't want to ever see it as work. Mm -hmm. You got, it got to be something you really enjoy to do. Yeah. Or you're going to see it like a job and you're never going to enjoy it and you're not going to put your all into it. Mm -hmm. So like me, my business is based off my life. I'm an artist, I modeled, and I'm into clothing. Yeah. So that's a three in one. That's what my business is. Yeah. Now, as far as me doing it correctly, right now I'm not because... I should be marketing way better, way more. I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing it at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's that's my fault. I can't right. blame nobody else for my for my business not flourishing how mm -hmm. it should because mm -hmm. I know what I need to do. I need to stop bullshitting and get that part done. And it's interesting you say that because someone could be listening to this mm -hmm. and say, damn, but he's on point with his marketing. Like he's really doing that shit. Yeah. To hear him say that is crazy. I think that's a key trait in someone that is successful is never being satisfied, yeah. never being stagnant. No and matter how much you do, you always picture yourself doing way more, and you're like, yes. eh, I mean, what I'm doing is cool, but I should be here." And and that's a, and I like I say, my like people that follow me, I'm transparent with everything. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I like to tell people because people think I'm doing like I just went on another podcast like a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to tell them like, yes, to you, I'm doing the best. Mm -hmm. To me. I want like just like you want to be like me. I'm trying to be way to the level at this person, yeah. and just like they trying to be to the level of this person. Mm -hmm. And like yesterday, I was out looking in. I'm doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. I know it's a hundred more things that I could be doing better. Hands down. You might not see that, but yeah, uh, shit, I'm transparent. If you ever ask me, I'm gonna tell you. Like right. this yeah. could have been done better. Like I'm a, like like how I got to the point where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you the. I'm, it ain't a shortcut. I'm just gonna tell you the best way to do it. Right. Like you ain't gonna have to go through all this shit I didn't been through. Exactly. I'm giving you the straight sources. Yeah. Do this. Do this. Do this. Yeah. And boom, you should be good. Now. And that's the key to monetizing. Uh, just, just to say that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I say the exact same thing. Like I have friends, like especially with this podcast. Uh -huh. Like a lot of people, you know, I'm terrible with receiving compliments with this. Like I built this from the ground up, and you know, I, I receive compliments and you know stuff like that a lot and praise a lot. 
and I don't like it, like I'll take it. Like if someone's DMing me or shooting me a shout out or message, mm -hmm. I'm like, thank you, appreciate that. But people close to me that like try to give me credit for, you know what I'm saying, shout me out for this and that, I'm like, I mean, yes, all right, bro, but I, I it, could be doing, I could it's do really, really not where it really should be. And then they'd be so surprised to hear that. They'd be like, bro, stop trying to be humble. It ain't got shit to, to do, do with being humble. humble. Like, I'm really, I really don't see myself where I should be. Mm -hmm. Like, it could be so much more done. Fuck being humble. Like, if I were to take, if I were to take praise mm -hmm. and get comfortable, that leads to being stagnant. Hundred percent. Chris, like, okay, comfortability bet. is horrible. I can live with this. Okay, bet this. I'm on cloud nine. I don't yeah. ever want to leave this. No, that's how people no, get stuck. You have no room for improvement. No room for growth. And you always want to grow. Like they think of me opening that studio. That motherfucking studio is hell. Mm. What a nap is the most exp a nap is the capital. Mm -hmm. Fuck, that's the yeah. most expensive place. I'm paying yeah. three bands a month just to run the place. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, if nobody comes in because I don't allow smoking in there, so mm -hmm. I don't have a session for weeks. Yeah, I gotta use. I'm gonna use money. I my, I'll use my work check to pay my mm -hmm. bills. Like yeah. regardless, but yeah. you gotta understand is 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 a lot goes in going to it. Yes, just because a person have a business or have an establishment or have anything they running or that don't mean they rich. Right. Like to the outside looking in, you, yeah. these people really like, think oh, I'm, fil up. they think I'm filthy rich. Mm. I'm trying to, I am poor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm poor. And like opening it, starting a business, you don't see money for the first two to three years, right. regardless. Right. You're trying to make your money back that you didn't invest it and yeah. you didn't spend into yeah. the business. And, and like you said, all your money goes back into it. Yes. Like a true grinder entrepreneur. Mm. I love, I heard, I think Dame Dash say like, Dame Dash, you think millions, whatever. He's like, yo, mm -hmm. I'm poor. Yes. All my money goes back into, he's like, it, all the money goes back into the track. Yes. And all the money goes right back into it. Like my, my photography studio. At first I started with just these two little square lights. Mm -hmm. Photography studio was making the most money at the time. I mm -hmm. upgraded everything. I put, bought two big flashers. Mm -hmm. I bought the two big continuous. Yeah. Whatever they tell me they need for the room, I'm going to buy. If, the, right. if that's what's making the money, I got to... It's a lot of stuff I want to do to recording studio, but once the recording studio start making the money I needed to make, mm -hmm. then I can make them upgrades. I can't right. just, I'm going to put money into whatever's making the money. Right. Of course, my clothing made the most money. My clothing bought the bill. My clothing yeah. did everything. Yeah. So I did pretty well over the years with clothing. Yeah. So Let's talk about how you said, like, you know, outside looking in, oh, we got the setup. That's what's up. But you're going behind, like, what goes into keeping it up. Like yes. you have to make sure you do what you do regardless. Uh -huh. So let's talk about that in general. Cause I think that's another thing that leads to people being stuck. Let's talk from a man's perspective, handling your priorities 100%. as a man. Cause you, you're a parent, mm -hmm. you're a business owner, right? You're a traveler, you're, and you have a nine to five as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of priorities behind making sure that you're successful and have a certain quality of life. You can't, that doesn't just happen because you just wake up and it happens. Yeah. And so so you gotta have a great mindset. Yeah. And for me, for the most part, what helped me, I have a great support system too. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a great support system, it's way harder. Yeah, it is like, like me, like it's never a day I can wake up and say, damn, I can't go do this or I can't go to work because I don't have nobody to watch my kids. Mm -hmm. That's never. Yeah. I've always... Like I do good by my family, they do good by me. So yeah. my step, my stepdad, shit, my kids were my stepfather more than anybody. Yeah. But of course, I still have my mom, I have my dad, right. I have five brothers, three sisters, I, yeah. a lot of siblings. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's like I got a great support system. So it's never a time where I got to pause got my village. life. I never really have to pause my life for nothing. Mm. Like I get backlash, like. Not from the public, like mm -hmm. it might be one of my kids' mothers or something. Like, oh, you always get to do this, and I work for this. Right. It ain't like I'm doing this because to shit on you that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm working for this. It ain't yeah. like I'm. I put in the time to be able to do this, mm -hmm. and my priorities are taken care of. The kids are still great. They don't need nothing. Right. And they go on trips with me. Yeah. Now, if if you want to take a trip, you got to put the grind in. I. Yeah. Like I didn't fund it a lot of shit in my life. Mm -hmm. Me as a person, I'm a giver. Yeah. So, which and people don't understand as a giver, you all you know is to give to help. It ain't much, and you just got to come to realization. It ain't much help you're ever gonna get. Mm -hmm. and people ain't gonna give you shit. You're right. known as the giver. You're the person. You're the provider. You're the yeah. person that everybody comes to. Yeah. But when you think about it, then you be thinking like, damn. 
you might have a bad month. Mm-hmm. You never gonna go ask nobody for nothing. Right. Still. Still. Even still. And that that's hell yeah. And that's me as a that's me. I ain't asking for shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a way for something. Well, that's that's a that should be at least a man's perspective. A man. It's no men these days. Nah, because it's, the thing is, one, they want the handout, like you said. Yeah, people, it's, it'd be grown men in my grown DMs asking man. me for money. Bro. I'm like, do y'all understand? I have four kids, bro. Right. I have a whole business. Mm. I have a house. Yeah. I have yeah. shit. All my, my kids, they in, that's three separate houses. If they right. need something, I still got to... I gotta yeah. have what I have at my house, and if they need something at their house, I have to provide that too if they need it. Right, and theirs like, comes first. Yes, which like, goes back to hand the priorities. But yeah, it's two things. It's one, many the some some men either want a handout, mm-hmm. or if something goes a disarray, if there's a bump in the road, which ten times out of fucking time in life it will be. Yes, they stay down. They blame the world for them being down. Instead of picking your fucking boots up, lacing them shits, and getting back to fuck grinding. 100%. That's that's a, a huge thing. And like- I, Go get a fucking job. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be tough. Like, like and, it, and it's, bro, it's everywhere is hiring, bro. Yeah. yeah. Before, you go ask, uh, before you go ask another man for some money, mm-hmm. ask him for a job first. Yeah. Ask him for a job. <laughs> shit, shit is not going to be easy. At all, bro. And this is one thing that I notice with like, if I see, a, and this may be petty, I don't give a fuck. Say I see a, <laughs> a homeless dude on the on the street begging for money. Nine right? times ten, I give him nothing. Well, sometimes I do, but what I'm going is I'll see them, especially if they're younger. Like if they're old and they can't do shit. I mean, I guess, but I'm talking about dudes forty and under on yeah. the street, homeless, bumming and begging. I'm like, yo, that shit is fucking lazy. Yes. I'm not saying they got to go get a job right then and there, but yo, you can get a whole case of water, 24 waters from Aldi for $3. Get a cooler, fill it up with ice. Don't just and stand sell the water. And sell the fucking waters, bro. That's why I mean, like- No, not like, even that, bro. And they complain about so many people coming into this country. The Migos and most of my best friends, my best friends are Migos. Mm-hmm. So- them motherfuckers, they just get in this country, they go sit outside a Home Depot, Office Depot, and get picked up and go to work. On the corner all day, and they just get and into they, it. And they go work, bro. And mm-hmm. y'all mad at them. They take it. No, they ain't taking nothing. You don't want to do it. You nope. lazy as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's a problem with the laziness, wanting to hand out, and staying down when life knocks them down, which, like we said, 10 times out of 10 is definitely going to happen. So let's close it out with this. I want to talk about the mentality. Because we talked about the exterior. I want to talk about the interior that goes into someone just handling their business as a man. Let's talk about the mentality and the discipline behind that. I want to talk about you, like just as far as your take on that and uh-huh. where that even came from with you. Me personally, I, I just see like failure is not an option. That's mm-hmm. my mentality. Yeah. There's no way I can lose because everybody depends on me. So it's like, I feel like if I fail, the whole fortress is going down. Mm. Because I've always been the person that everybody comes to. Yeah. I take care of everybody. Like for the longest, for the longest time, shit, I'm spending so much money because I'm taking care of everybody. Like, mm. and then like now, like these, like now it's like they get into the point where they now everybody's starting to understand where I'm coming from now. So they're like, he's he's working to build, build everybody up. So we gotta stop asking for so much mm. and work together. Yeah. Like shit, at at one point. I couldn't get nothing now. I, well, I would never, I don't ask for nothing anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, now I get the, you hungry today? Yeah. Have you ate today? Yeah. Yeah. You want something? I'm going to get the, I'm going to buy, we we'll do something. You want something too? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh shit. Cause it's they, the taking commu- care of, they taking care yeah. of me now. They notice the community effort yeah. that goes behind. So it's like, I just feel like failure is not an option. Like uh, that's the, that's the biggest thing that go in my head mm. and never settle. Yeah. I can't settle. Like, like I said, y'all think I'm doing great. I think I could be doing way better. Mm-hmm. I feel like I haven't accomplished shit yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and like we said, that's a key component to a hyper successful person. Never satisfied. Um, so your take is a great one because you said I have so many people that re- you have kids like your mm-hmm. community relies on you. So like you can't fail because you'll be and letting I'm, them down. hundred percent. And um, that's a great motivational factor. Me, I'm kind of the opposite because I don't have kids. I don't have a girlfriend or nothing. It's just me and my dog out here in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of the opposite. In you the have no family out here either? None. I just oh, came shit. out here. I just oh, packed shit. up my shit, 
put my dog in the U-Haul and we just came out here. And that's dope because I wanted to move out of state. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, I was going to move to Cali first because, of course, yeah. I used to fly Cali every yeah. week for obvious reasons. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but fucking, um, I was going to move to Miami. Mm. And Miami still looks nice. Like, Florida still looks nice because mm -hmm. far as me, like, music-wise, like, of course, my videographer just moved there. Yeah. Producers live there. Mm. So, so I was like, going to Miami. So Miami will work for me, but it wouldn't, it don't work now. It's yeah. like I got the business here yeah. and the business requires me to be there for it to run at the moment. Right. So. And and then plus your family. So you yeah. have you have that foundation, mm -hmm. which like you said, like that's you feel like if you let down, if you take a mm -hmm. or if you fail, I don't want to say take a L, because when I say take a L, I'm talking about take a lesson. Yeah. When people look at loss, it's not that's a lesson. So you don't want to fail because that foundation back yeah. home is is you. Yeah. So if you drop, you say they would drop. 100%. Me, since I'm independent Mine is like, yo, like you said, first of all, I just can't be satisfied. I just never had that in me where like, I'm just cool with being average. And if you are, God bless. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like not everyone can be successful in life because then there will and, be no tipping scale. And I had to learn that because I get a lot of backlash for one of them podcast clips mm -hmm. that I made. Yeah. Which is- What did you it's say? Not, it's not like wrong because uh -huh. I'm like, me personally, it's not personally, it's proven fact. Mm -hmm. If you do not own nothing- you will always live check to check. Yeah. So you cannot complain about living check to check if you don't put the work in to become a boss or oh, to own something. You literally, because even say you say your checks rise, people mm -hmm. raise their living standards. Yes. That's why you see doctors and lawyers and stuff living check to check. Yes, still. 100%. Because you can do this now. You think you can afford this now. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. That's not, nah, that's true. But a lot of people put this into my head, which is 100% true too. Everybody can't be a boss because who the way the who the fuck can be the workers? Exactly, it's a reason why they don't teach a lot of this shit in schools, or it's a reason why the standard educational curriculum is to be a worker, a nine to five worker. It's a yes. reason for that because you need them to run this shit. It's a reason work. exactly, and I just since I was a young and I just never was like satisfied with that I, I just i just never was and i just always wanted another reason i just want my own name i want uh -huh. my own brand i want to be my own boss not because it looks cool not because it's fun because honestly this shit ain't fun yeah. how you said the studio that shit ain't fun it's a at lot all. that goes into it this podcast shit it looks cool yeah day he has his own studio and There's a the lot podcast of, a lot of fucking work this shit is not fun the fun is only 10 percent. yes 90 percent of the work that goes behind it is not fun at all it's a lot of fucking grind that i've so many nights have said, fuck this shit. Yeah. So many nights. This shit ain't fun. It's only 10% fun that you see. But the reason why I do it, the reason why I'm sticking with it is because, like you said, it's, it's just no other option. I just see it as having my own and I can't let a bump in the road stop me. And also another mindset, another thing that goes into it is because I know that so many people that come across those thoughts of, I want to stop, or come across any type of bump in the road, they do stop. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if I stop, I'm average. I ain't yes. an average person. At all. So if I stop, I'm average. Like if I keep going, I'm already separated from the average crowd that stopped because it got tough. Yes. And it's fine to have thoughts of stopping or feel like or feel like you should take a break, but as long as you keep your foot on the gas, because emotions is emotions. You're always going to feel a yeah. different type of way about everything. If your dreams and goals don't scare you, they aren't big enough. At all, 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, this was some great as dope as conversation. I appreciate it. Appreciate you for pulling yeah. up. Already. You know what I mean? This was Thank dope. Thank you for having me. Shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and y'all y'all wouldn't even know that we ain't know each other until today. I was just ready to say that. Ah, we, we, you know, you guys just say that. We both kind of from the same area of Maryland. Both know the same people. people. Both, you know what I'm saying? Was went in, to the prom. We was at the prom, prom together. together. All that. This was our first time meeting. Yes. And people would never guess. Um, but that's just, you know what I'm saying? That's why I only invite certain people up here on the podcast. Uh -huh. I get DMs every day. And I hope, and let me say this, people, I hope y'all don't think I'm being arrogant by not, I can't, if I were to accept every person that want to come on here, I would literally record a podcast every day. I have to turn down a lot, but it has to make sense. Yes. And you know what I mean? That's a lot of fucking work. A the lot. Edit, the editing process. A lot. Five to 10 hours by a lot. itself. So like, like, I'm like, if I set up a podcast, it has to really make sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this one made sense from the jump. Um, Again, shout out to Ebony for making this happen. Hell yeah. Um, When she, you know what I'm saying? Through the alley-oop, I did my research. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be dope. So I appreciate you for pulling up. Um, I know you got to get to, uh, you know, baby shower. Enjoy the rest of your time out here in Charlotte. 
if you need a if you need a good food spot, let me know. I do. Let me know the type of food you like, and I could definitely point you. In the I love direction. seafood. Seafood. So we're spoiled because we're from we're from Maryland. Yeah, the seafood out here, Trash. Fu- it, it ain't fucking. You want it was crazy? I was literally gonna drive. I was gonna drive down here one day. <laughs> drive just drive down here just to go to the seafood place I seen on TikTok out here. So they have some. It was like a big like. Seafood shit, like a big seafood platter thing they had. They do that. They do the boils out here. Yeah. They do the seafood boils in a the bag. They are good. They Ain't are better good. than back home. But. Nah, it's not. It's but not. you wonder where I had a good one at? Florida. Oh yeah, they got good seafood in Florida. Fire out there. And good I went to I just, Louisiana. Was fire. I had yeah, Louisiana. Them crawfish I and mean, oysters. Did I, did I go to Louisiana? Yeah, I did. Yeah, them crawfish and Louisiana and oysters in Louisiana are like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But if you're looking for like crabs. Or if you're looking for blue crabs, crab cake, or snow legs, it's not like back home. I mean, yeah. we're, it, it, we're- It's one of a kind. Yeah. We, we, we ain't nobody fucking with back home when it comes yeah, to that. Yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man. Again, appreciate you for making this happen. Yes, sir. Um, I would love to pull up on your studio back home and get like a behind the scenes in-depth walk around and talk. And we'll, uh, you know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll get more into that later. But um, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I got to thank y'all for tuning in because what would this be without y'all? Appreciate y'all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but until next time, oh, let me say this. Go ahead and check out the questionnaire at the bottom of this episode in the bio. It takes two to three minutes. It's fully anonymous. But if I could just get y'all feedback, I really appreciate it because it helps me make the show better for y'all. So go ahead and take two to three minutes, fill out that questionnaire, and um, you know what I'm saying? Just be on point for the next episode to drop. But until that happens, until the next time, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. We out this bitch.